I spent a lot of time looking at conspiracies that take place that are not really perce perceptible um, from every perspective. And those are the conspiracies against African Americans in medicine in the US. There's a very long, sad, um, dramatic history of this. And some of that history that I want to illuminate for you in the context of understanding why so many people, African Americans and others, look at American medicine and see a very negative agenda toward African Americans that colors their behavior today. Very often one reads about the negative response of most African Americans to medical research, for example. And it's true. The studies, the numbers are all over the place. But one of the more um, convincing studies said that about 85% of African Americans cutting through all socioeconomic strata um, expressed a profound distrust of medical research in the US. What's interesting to me about that was it also said that 51% of white US citizens expressed the same fears. And um, these fears are based on what many people would have called conspiracy theories. They didn't subscribe to them. They didn't think they were abuse. And I certainly do. I think it's really important to understand that African American medical profile was carefully constructed during the Victorian era. It was constructed in, man in many ways. Uh, there was natural law that spoke of the natural inferiority and rightful place of African Americans. There was um, Christianity, which condemned African Americans as the children of Ham, cursed by God, doomed to inferiority, and to be a servant to um, their white brethren. And you know, there were enlightenment musings, not so enlightened when it came to people of color very frequently. Africans were savages, noble or otherwise. But of course, it was science that was becoming ascendant. Science was becoming the primary way of knowing in the Victorian era. And so it's the views of scientists that are most important here. These imaginary diseases were things that only affected blacks according to the canon. But interestingly, if you read the uh, physicians' actual journals and their diaries, their, rec their rep receipts for um, prescriptions, you found that the, um, a very different story. For example, prolagra, which we know now to be a deficiency disease because slaves were routinely malnourished. Um, they, many of them had pellagra. And it was considered, though, by the period, these doctors said, well, that's an infectious disease. It's called by, caused by dirt lack of hygiene. That's why only black people get it. Later, when, the, um, when poor economy caused a southern diet to plummet and whites began getting it, when white people would present with, a, um, present with pellagra, people, doctors would begin asking them about their black ancestry, and which didn't go over very well, as you can imagine. And um, as it turned out, it was akin to a diagnosis when a white person with sickle cell anemia today people immediately thought, well, you must not be quote unquote racially pure if you've got pellagra. Even in the 60s and 70s, there were problems in schools in Boston, New York City, and Los Angeles, where obstetrical gynecology residents were being trained when they um, um, had women, pregnant women patients, that if the women, woman was black and already had a child, they were trained to do surreptitious um, hysterectomies to sterilize her. They would do the hysterectomy. They would actually very often record a different procedure had been done. They would record a gallbladder removal, for example, and do a hysterectomy. And it was um, a huge problem. I think that it came to light in South Carolina, and then they found out about a lot of the northern cases. So many black women who were very leery of going to the hospital to have their children you know, had been, you know, chided and told that they were being unreasonable, this is just, um, you're being paranoid, this is a conspiracy theory, doctors are not waiting to sterilize you. Well, indeed, they were waiting to sterilize people. The Tuskegee syphilis study is the only study that most people have, well, many people have heard of. And the facts are very simple. Uh, four, 399 black men were recruited by the United States Public Health Service, but they were lied to they were recruited for a free health care. And after getting a sample of their blood, they were told, you've got bad blood, a very ambiguous term that could mean a lot of things, from venereal disease to, other, to blood poisoning to many other things. And they were told they were getting treatment. 
and they were given medication, they were given regular spinal taps. They thought they were being treated for whatever nebulous disease they had. They were not being treated. They were actually being monitored because the aim of the public health service doctors was to monitor these men, observe their and record their, de their decline, autopsy them, and in the end, write a report about what the disease did to them. And initially, I was really confused by this because I thought syphilis is an ancient disease. We've known of it for centuries. We know what it does to you. Um, and what was the mystery here? Why was it so important? Until I began understanding that these doctors actually subscribed to a tenet of the American School of Ethnology. They thought that syphilis in blacks and syphilis in whites were two different diseases. So that blacks with syphilis had a black disease. In white, syphilis could affect the um, muscles and nervous system of whites, but it did not affect the nervous system of blacks, only the muscles, because the doctors wrote um, the nervous systems of blacks were too primitive and disorganized to be affected by the, by the disorder, by the tryponine. So that's what they sought to prove, and in the end, that's what they wrote. They wrote a report saying exactly that, that syphilis in blacks was only a disease of muscles, not of the nervous system. HIV AIDS pandemic, I mean, conspiracy theories abound here. People believe that HIV um, was devised by scientists in the laboratory accidentally or intentionally. They believe that HIV, there was actually a cure for AIDS, but it's being withheld because they want black people and gay people to die off, those who are most infected. Um, so many theories. Many people with HIV AIDS were um, distinguished by being called innocent victims, which implies what? You've got guilty victims, right, if they're innocent victims. So innocent victims tended to be young, white, and virginal, you know. Uh, Ryan White, Kimberly Jalis, anyone who's old enough to remember these people. These were the people who are the, the innocent victims of AIDS. Um, didn't include African Americans. It seems almost laughable to read that these Victorian doctors felt that black people didn't feel pain. And the testimonials are absurd, you know. I've watched blacks cut off their own legs. I mean, that's absurd. No one would really believe that, right? And you, you would think that we were totally over that, but as it turns out, if you look at our behavior around blacks and pain relief, we haven't completely escaped this feeling. Um, numerous well-conducted studies have shown that when black and white have the same diagnoses and the same, relatively the same medical histories, they get very different approach to LMDs, a very different pain relief. Uh, black people are often sent away with um, Tylenol or some kind of over-the-counter medication in situations where um, whites are given Schedule II narcotics. Additionally, in the U.S., it's very, if you live in a Hispanic or African-American community, two-thirds of them do not even carry Schedule II drugs. So even should you get a legitimate script for a medication for your pain, you can't get it filled. When the researchers called the pharmacists at the, at the companies and asked, why don't you carry these drugs, they were told the same thing. Well, look where we are. We're in an area of Blacks and Hispanics are all drug seeking. You know, if we had these drugs, they'd, they'd break in and steal them. And they, so they were asked, well, what do you do when someone presents and needs a medication? They said, we can get any, any med we need in 72 hours. And it occurred to me that 72 hours is an eternity for someone in that kind of pain, if you need that sort of drug. Four months after I read that article, I read a piece in The Final Call, the Journal of the Black Muslim, saying exactly this, saying that White doctors, ignore your pain. If you're in pain, don't expect you're going to get, you know. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, yeah, the screaming headline, the hyperbole, doesn't really lend to credence, but they're actually right. What they were saying was true. And yet most people who I asked about this article, out of curiosity, not a scientific survey, I just asked people I knew, they all laughed at it, saying, oh, isn't that absurd? So it's not quite so absurd. A lot of these beliefs that, we, um, that do sound ludicrous, that might indeed be ludicrous, either they may have their roots in history, they may be their fears that may actually not be still applicable, but they have logical roots, they're logical fears, not logical ones. And the term paranoia is one that I've tried to move away from because it does imply a baseless fear. All these arguments um, are things that reflect beliefs about Africans. You know, this is a case where the medical, um, where the conspiracy is um, 
actually a product. It's actually a product of these beliefs. Uh, it's not necessarily that you got doctors in a room who all decided, let's make sure these Africans die of Ebola. That's absurd. Of course not. But it is a case of longstanding beliefs about Africans coalescing in this you know, perfect storm. Um, the belief that Africans, and by extension, African Americans cannot, um, do not understand things well is very tenacious. The belief that um, they have an unwarranted fear of medicine and they have a very diffuse fear of medical research that's also warranted. One of the things I find interesting is that Africa is often presented as a continent um, that is a stranger to medical research, and yet some of our research initiatives first came from Africa, not just the um, variolation that Cotton Mather experienced, but also treating um, uh, scurvy with citrus, a lot of reproductive advances. So um, it's certainly not the case people couldn't understand. I think it's just the case that we have fallen into this belief system.